So Property Brothers is a real estate brand that creates um, content creatively for our clients when we sell and market properties. Uh, we are a combination of a real estate sales team with our own content and media production arm, our own uh, research arm, our own inside sales team, our own digital marketing arm. So we operate and run uh, like um, a full-blown production house uh, coupled with uh, a lot of analysis and, and research. Yeah, so we, we function uh, as a team wherever we approach properties that our clients and trust us to sell. Whether is it a project, a, sing a singular property, uh, we create content for every property that we sell. I remember it was like a 4 or 5 p.m. announcement by the Prime Minister and we were all in the office. When the announcement came, uh, we immediately after the announcement hold a briefing together uh, with everyone. Yeah, so we only had that one day to shift all the equipment to my home, to some of my guys' home, um, who, are, who are usually the, the video presenters. So, so our media team immediately packed everything, went to my home, pasted all the tapes on the floor on the tripod position, uh, send the equipment to my guys home and, and all that and we took that one day to film some of the properties that uh, we have not launched yet we quickly contacted our, our clients and then filmed the place and um, we quickly researched what additional equipments uh, wires we need for audio and all that kind of stuff quickly went down to, to purchase we did the final briefing and um, yeah, so, so basically it was a lot of prep work. Everybody started packing their computers, their iMacs and all that, <laughs> brought home as well. Yeah, so it was that one and a half day of, of a lot of scrambling. <laughs> we were uh, anticipating that definitely for probably for the first couple of weeks, people will want to monitor the situation. So we were anticipating uh, sales volume to drop. Um, we prepped everybody just to remain positive. And uh, of course, we, we trust that uh, the, our government measures are, are, are sound. I would say definitely there will be fear, uncertainty, especially when the news reports, you know, people are starting to close down, retrench stuff and all that. So we will, we're doing some forward planning, but we also want to stay positive in a sense. At the start of the circuit breaker, we told all our people that we will not uh, reduce salary we will not retrench any of them and uh, we will hold on as long as we can uh, if um, our finances uh, allows us. So definitely, um, because we have a huge back-end team, uh, our operations are a little bit different from a one-man show salesperson. Uh, we, we did, we did had, a, had a dip in terms of our uh, revenue versus expense because we, we had to sustain the manpower cost and stuff. So um, we told everybody that let's just create content. Let's just continue to, to add value to our customers. Um, thankfully, we were able to, to sustain that period for that two to three months. We didn't retrench anyone. And uh, after that, we, we started employing. Yeah, because there were, there were a lot of pent up demand. Uh, we started to increase our manpower uh, three months after the circuit breaker. The key challenge were two things. Number one is that I would say majority still chose to wait till they can see it physically before making a commute. So that was one. Uh, second, uh, I would say second um, main challenge that happened was uh, the sudden shift to work from home um, where we have a, a huge back-end team and we are in the we are, we are always in the culture of creating content so because of this we couldn't go and film content and we have a lot of properties that are coming up that uh, our owners have just newly appointed us to sell so during that last few days before the circuit we were rapidly going out to film whatever we can and during that circuit breaker season it was a standstill so we, we couldn't create content for newer homes uh, but thankfully our new customers they were they were they understand the situation so they waited together with us until the the circuit breaker is over and then we started filming uh, um, at the tail end of, of that circuit breaker season uh, third thing is to keep the synergy and motivation of the team strong yeah because everybody is too long at home already and and we, we needed um, that positivity and, and culture to, to keep the, the company um, focused in a sense. Uh, during that one and a half day, 
the entire team came uh, sat down and then we came out with a 60 day content plan so so one was content because we are in the social media space and our facebook instagram youtube needs to have constant content um to to engage our audience yeah so we sat down with a 60 day plan and uh, thankfully we have we had enough content because we we always do forward filming yeah so we have enough content to edit and last for 60 days it's only when the extension came that uh we we really uh crack our brains to see how to create more content so we did live shows on home viewings uh where our salespeople they will they will um like four to five of them do a live show to to bring audiences on virtual tours and things like that talk about the properties second thing is that we um started with our podcast live shows uh we invited uh, lawyers um landed property builders um we talked to um business owners and entrepreneurs yeah so just to create different types of content to to make the the, the channels a little bit more interesting the transaction volume in singapore has always been pretty healthy at, at quite a quite a same rate uh, pre covid yeah um majority of the people still prefer to wait until the circuit breaker is over yes it was affected for only three, three months in terms of transaction volume and then after that it it sort of exploded because there there were a lot of pent up demand so i'll, I'll perhaps share in three portions uh, pre-covid uh, it was pretty healthy during covid um, this was the first time that we have experienced such a pandemic situation right uh, so naturally at the at the start point of covid a lot of buyers they will um, they are taking a, a, a sideline approach they're trying to monitor and see what's going to happen to the market so a lot of them didn't come in and added to the fact that they cannot view the properties uh, physically but interestingly um, there were buyers who can commit uh, virtually without viewing the properties and there's been um, quite a fair bit of transactions that were done and primarily these are buyers who have either seen um, the the physical property before pre-covid but they have not made a commitment uh, buyers who are definitely going to re-renovate the whole interior um, and they they have a timeline to meet they committed to properties uh, buyers who are extremely well versed with that particular condo project or that particular HDB project or landed property and uh, they're very sure that this is the layout they want so, so they, they commit virtually in a sense yeah so during the COVID season there were some uh, very interesting observations about buyers uh, preferences um, of course a lot of sellers they, they wanted to put on hold as well uh, some sellers still want to put their property in the market some sellers were thinking hey maybe I should wait until circuit breaker is over then I will uh, remarket my property to the entire audience because there, there were a large number of people who wanted to wait until circuit breaker is over. Yeah, and property is, is a, a a very huge purchase item. People want to see, feel, and touch. Yeah, so uh, right after circuit breaker, I would say the the entire property market um, became very very buoyant, and uh, that started from June. Um, immediately July, August, September, all the way until now, and. Because of the sudden virtualization, I think a lot of buyers and sellers they, during that circuit breaker, they were doing a lot of homework, a lot of research, viewing a lot of videos, seeing a lot of different properties, and they were ready to come out to view them physically after the, the breaker was released. So there was a huge pan up, I would say, after that. Probably in our context, 70% wanted to wait for physical viewing. 30% um uh are okay to commit virtually and, and we, we 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 did sold uh, homes during the circuit breaker season virtually a lot of people after the circuit breaker they started looking for bigger homes yeah and um example people started to upgrade to bigger properties um we even had clients that we sold off their three beta in a project and then they buy back a four bedder in the same same development because they want the extra bedroom yeah so a lot of preferences change i think partly because um everybody is looking for the extra space to work from home um their kids were doing uh like home study during that period but before the schools reopen so a lot of people i think after being confined for two to three months together with their children working from home they starting to realize the importance of space yeah, so with that change and shift in preference, there was there was some uh, very huge demand for very unique properties. For example, penthouses, our uh, penthouses started to sell very well. 
ground floor unit starts to sell very well because there's a combination of outdoor and indoor space. Um, larger properties started to sell very well. Landed properties did very well until today. So I would say that the circuit breaker has brought about a shift in preferences and it has increased the interest in properties. Yeah, which then brought about an expansion in our business. Yeah. Some of our, our partners and friends in the renovation industry, they're also seeing an uptick in their business because a lot of people, they say a lot of people are just renovating, upgrading their, their inter interior renovation in their home because they are not traveling, they have the extra funds and they just want to make their space more efficient by adding a pantry here, more workspaces at home and stuff. So renovation has also uh, been booming since then. Yeah, so I, I think real estate falls into that spectrum that um, because of the shift and change in preferences, this market is, is right now in a very buoyant phase. Now we are better prepared um, after we resume uh, most of our operations after Circuit Breaker. Uh, better prepared in terms of our mindset. Uh, better prepared also in the way that although we were already doing digital marketing, but in the way that we use digital tools. Yeah, so there were a lot more tools that we realized that are very important. So we also adapted to how consumers and customers choose to behave. We also uh, have been uh, toying around with our equipment to see how we can make the Zoom sessions more engaging, how can we make the, the quality better during even a Zoom presentation and stuff like that. If in future we really have another situation similar, hopefully not, uh, but I think we are better prepared on how do we react very quickly um, and we are constantly ramping up our content creation to store it so that we can continue to, to edit it even if there is a, a similar thing happening again. The pandemic has escalated the usage of um, digital tools, visualization and the attention of uh, consumers towards content on social media uh, has escalated. It has caused like instant kind of uh, J-curve adaptation, meaning that suddenly maybe a, a, a person in their 50s, 60s were, were always not looking at social media and stuff. Suddenly everybody is like looking at it. Yeah, so, so there's an instant adaptation. And because of that, I think it's very important uh, not just real estate agents to, to adapt and then to shift uh, how they market properties uh, differently. Uh, I think all other industries are also uh, trying to evolve. If a uh, real estate agent is not um, open to the, to the thought that they want to do something different, they want to use more um, content on social media, tech tools, platforms, and if they only want to rely on very, um, I would say, uh, usual kind of traditional marketing methods, then naturally I think it, it's not that their competitors will, will, will disrupt them, it's that the, the market is disrupting them in a sense, yeah, because the, the consumer's behavior are changed. It's really about the mindset, about are you willing to to break out of your comfort zone? Yeah, because there's a lot of things to break out, like you need to stand in front of the camera, you need to talk in front of the camera, you need to present, you need to memorize your facts, you need to do more research because you cannot just talk about very superficial stuff on the camera. You need to really go in depth, talk about analysis and, and why do you think it's worth the customers, the buyer's time to come down and see the place physically, you know? Um, why is this property worth their time? Yeah, so there's a lot more research that needs to be done. Yeah. The whole economy and market in terms of how consumers uh, think and what consumers expect is that uh, if I talk about the real estate space is that uh, consumers will get more and more tech savvy analysis driven so the most important thing is that if I'm a buyer of a property I want to buy a property I want to know um, the numbers I want to know um, how is how will be the performance of this property what's going to happen in five to ten years time what is the the expected numbers returns that will look like and um, I also want to know what are some of the the behaviors of other properties around this property that I'm interested in so I, so I think it's a lot more analysis driven research driven uh, they also want to know a little bit more about the history and things like that so I think uh, the key mindset that a real estate agent will need to have is that 
that we have to continuously be improving and be very very good at our work um, and it's not it's no longer like in the past 10 20 years ago whereby we will open the door show a property you close the door and then you just negotiate an offer it, it's more than that already it's about really how do you be creative in certain aspects in research in marketing in digital advertising in content creation so so it's, it's a more all-rounder right now yeah compared to the past so i think the involvement into really an all-rounder becoming an expert in real estate is is very important yeah so uh the interesting thing is that a lot of my employees they when they look back at how i interview them how we interview them they're always asking why didn't you look at a deep look at my resume and at their qualifications and all that perhaps it's just for for our industry because what we look at is really a lot more on the person's attitude you know, uh, whether this person has initiative is their eq level high do they have um the courage to to pose smart questions are they willing to humble themselves to ask if they're not able to do certain things so i think um the eq level is very important yeah most importantly the emotional quotient will land you a job even if you don't have a high qualification yeah and i think a lot of employ employers are looking at that whether your emotional quotient is high are you able to work as a team are you able to ask questions to continue to Im improve yourself so i would say as a young person if they ask me what skills level they have is to really uh, read a lot ask a lot of questions go out and intern as much as you can go and do a lot more part-time jobs as you can get that ground experience on how to talk to people interact with people learn how to sell because everything you do you need to sell yeah you whether you want to be a freelancer you want to open a small business you want to join a big company you must sell the first thing you need to sell is you need to sell yourself and you need to sell your services so if you don't know how to build that connection and rapport with people very rapidly and you fail to um, have that that kind of selling mindset um, on how to present yourself properly uh, i think it will disadvantage you right so so i think the the soft skills part all these are categorized under soft skills emotional quotient sales skills selling skill presentation skills and i think if you are young just be courageous and take part in um uh toastmasters and you know presentation courses and and do some sales job uh do some retail job and and make sure the job is uh, involving talking to people and, and stuff like that of course uh, the media space is is exploding um if you know how to do um editing video editing you know how to create content you know how to do coding and all this these are all industries that are exploding and content creation is a huge thing that will go on for for many many, many years to come i would say the first most important thing is that um to count your costs that means to understand what are the the risk and reward of every category so there are pros and cons of being an employee pros and cons of being a freelancer self-employed pros and cons of being a business owner uh, every segment has its own cost that you need to count yeah um, are you willing to spend the amount of time that a business owner have to spend because um, everything is on your shoulder right you need to take care of your company your employee um, getting a new business settling problems um, talking to your customers getting the sales in doing the right marketing most importantly is the end of the day you must enjoy the work because you don't want to wake up and then you dread going to work dread going to your business dread meeting your customer you, it must be something that you know for the next 5 10 15 years this is something that you will love to wake up to and uh, there will be certain parts of the the work that we are doing that maybe i prefer this portion this portion and not this portion and you have to realize that there's no perfection also but overall i think it must be something that you love to do uh, the first thing is to know your passion very early on count your costs um, based on your current life stage are you able to commit and do uh, your new business by burning your bridge and don't be too timing meaning that don't come in to start a new business thinking that hey okay if i fail after one year i'll go back and find a job i, I think the most important thing is to burn your bridge and tell yourself if i want to start a new business i will put in my 200 percent effort to make it work right and and see how far it can bring me to 
yeah, I, I think how business leaders and employers can show care is is really to have um, uh, the the understanding of and empathy of of their their people. Of course, not all business uh, will be able to react the same way as any other business. Uh, for example, I mean, if somebody is, is in a business running a business that uh, is so vastly affected. Uh, that they definitely have to close down then I think that's inevitable yeah so or they really have to retrench a few people to stay afloat cut down on the working hours and all that I, I think most importantly is that um, the business must be able to survive um, in order to take care of the existing or the balanced employees yeah so um, it will be very difficult to speak for all businesses yeah because our, our business are all different so I would say perhaps uh, as a generic approach is uh, as far as we can if we can as a business owner if we can sustain if even if that means we take a, a loss a, a loss for a, a, a period of time that we can still sustain uh, without closing down or we break even for a couple of months without closing down then as far as we can we try to sustain our, our employees yeah i think that's that's the approach that we we had lah. so first i cannot speak for everybody yeah and everybody is i have i have friends that have to close down they have to lay off some of their, their guys and, and nobody wants that to happen